fear the turtle. Has anybody noticed what Maryland has been doing? I have. Plus the latest on Mel Tucker. Locked on Big Ten starts right now. You are locked on Big Ten. Your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Big Ten. I'm Craig Shima. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. We really appreciate it. And, you know, we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And this episode of Locked On Big Ten is brought to you by eBay Motors. A championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. So for parts that fit, head to eBay Motors. And look for the green check. Stay in the game with eBay Guaranteed Fit. eBayMotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. We got to take notice of the Maryland Terps, people. They are a little bit under the radar, but I told you this summer they'd be just fine. Meanwhile, more Mel Tucker reaction and My personal Big Ten power rankings I will share with you for your opinion. Be sure to subscribe and follow Lockdown Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcasts. That way you'll get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. All right. Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State are all undefeated. You're like, thanks, Craig. The sky is blue. Grass is green. We get it. Yada, yada, yada. But has anyone outside of Maryland noticed that the Terps are undefeated at 4-0 with a great chance to go to 5-0? While well, the Wolverines and the Buckeyes and the Nittany Lions are grabbing national headlines and podcast airspace, for example, the Terps, they're blowing people out. They're blowing them out. And they've got a talented offense and a very, very stingy defense. They are a fun football team to watch, and it's time to people paid attention to this football team. They're coming off a game in which quarterback Talia Tagovailoa threw for three touchdowns and ran for another in last weekend's 31 to nine win over Michigan State. And they also played some defense well uh, as well. Uh, this is this is something you got to pay attention to with this Maryland football team. They have a pretty good defense. Uh, they forced the Spartans into five turnovers in that game. And they have allowed only four offensive touchdowns in their first four games. And they forced uh, 11 turnovers overall. They've got seven interceptions in four games. That's pretty good. And uh, Tarheem still has three already by himself. Team averages a forced fumble per game. They they are all over the place. And they've had uh, 10 sacks so far this year. Jay Sean Barnum, linebacker, leads the way with two. So they, they're they they're hitting you everywhere. They're intercepting you. They're forcing you to fumble, forcing you into mistakes. They're making tackles. They're sacking you. They're doing it all on defense. Because I know on offense, they get a lot of attention. But the defense has really been playing very, very well. Offensively, you know who the players are. Talia Tagovailoa, we talk about him all the time. We did a feature podcast this summer. Remember when we learned that in SEC school? In fact, Talia was the one that told us in Big Ten Media Days. He said there was an SEC school out there that offered him a million and a half dollars to transfer. Between you and me, we know who it was. It had to be Alabama, given their quarterback situation this year and their problems and the fact that Talia used to go to school there, you know it was Alabama. It absolutely had to be. And he said, no, good at Maryland. We got a good thing going here. And they do. So let's talk about that a little bit. Talia has completed 64% of his passes. He's thrown eight touchdowns and three interceptions. He's only been sacked twice, and he has a quarterback rating of 149. Been pretty darn good and solid. He's also averaging 8.2 yards per pass attempt. Remember when we talked about them this summer? This is something they wanted to work on because that number actually dipped from two years ago to last year, and they wanted to get that back up. A couple more deep shots, and to have 8.2 yards per attempt, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And uh, mission accomplished there. That was one of the things they wanted to do. Talia's favorite weapon, people to throw to, well, it's everybody. 
He's got six receivers that have at least 10 catches so far this year. And the running game is led by a guy I've talked to you about many times here, Roman Hemby. He's averaging over five yards of carry and just plowing over people. They also have Colby McDonald. They use him a little bit less, but he's still very effective at about eight yards of carry. Got a running game to go with their passing game. Very good. You know, you may be stunned to know that their win in East Lansing was their first there since 1950. I'll make an argument here that this is a pretty historic team. Not only did they just do something they haven't done since 1950, it's more uh, historic numbers as well. In their first four games this year, they've um, they've won by at least 18 points in all four games to start the season. This is the first time they've done that since 1913. That's a long time ago. So with a diverse offensive attack and a game-changing defense and Maryland just blowing people away, they are winning by an average of 25 points per game. That's the margin. That is the winning margin, Twenty minimum, just on average, 25 points a game. And don't forget, with Charlotte and Virginia, two of the four games, remember, they spotted them a 14-0 lead. That's right. Maryland fell behind 14-0 to two different schools, and they're still winning by an average of 25 points per game. Something's going on there in Maryland that needs to be paid attention to. they got a great chance to go 5-0. and They're taking on the Indiana Hoosiers. The Hoosiers just needed four overtimes to beat Akron at home last week. So uh, going five and zero, a very real possibility for the Maryland Terps. And then after that, they got Ohio State. That's going to be a, a, the first real major test. I keep telling you how good Maryland is. We're going to find out how good they are in that Ohio State football game. Then, then we'll get some questions answered. And if you want to look ahead of that, Maryland fan. They got winnable games against Illinois and Northwestern coming up before their Penn State game. Then they got Nebraska and Michigan and Rutgers to close out the season. So, yeah, while they could get off to a 5-0 and start by going ahead and, and, and beating Indiana this weekend, they still have Michigan, Penn State, and Ohio State still ahead of them on their schedule. Tough games. But you know what? They go get one of those three, got a real good chance at a 10-win season. You win two of those three, now you're in the mix of the conversation for a Big Ten championship. That's what's at stake here. And the question is, you know, because we spend a lot of time talking about, you know, Michigan, Ohio State, Ohio State, Michigan, and oh, yeah, Penn State's right there. Maryland might be that next team right in there, but how good are they? How good are they? That's what we're going to find out. That's what I'd like to hear from you. I always take comments. Hit me up on Twitter at Talk Big Ten or comments here on YouTube. Always get back to answering those. I was following through some of those and getting back to you guys uh, earlier today before we went on with the podcast. Always enjoy it. Always love interacting. Keep that coming. Uh, we will um, we'll continue to do that. Plus, coming up, we're going to take a look at some of the uh, Big Ten Awards of the Week, some very worthy people to take note of, and the latest take on what has happened in the Mel Tucker story at Michigan State. All that coming up right here on Lockdown Big Ten. DoorDash, you've all heard of it. You've all used it. Um, do you know that they are in the business of bringing groceries to you now? It's not just about restaurants anymore. I, want to tell you, I mean, if you run out of something, coffee, creamer, eggs, something, you don't want to run out and make a whole big deal out of it, they come to you. Or maybe you want the whole big shebang, the whole list, the whole grocery shopping. Have them bring it to you. DoorDash grocery delivery. You love the convenience of getting what you want. You've trusted DoorDash to deliver all your restaurant favorites. Now let them bring your groceries to you. Thousands of grocery stores to choose from. You'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. You get exactly what you ordered or they'll make it right. So sit back and enjoy quality groceries just like you picked them yourself. And if you want even more value, listen to this. You can save on all your grocery and restaurant favorites with a $0 delivery fee on all eligible orders with a Dash Pass membership. Dash, Dash Pass. So with, um, you know, you get easy substitutions and um, get the app, best-in-class customer support. DoorDash delivers groceries exactly how you want it. Here's what you need to do. Get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value 
when you use code locked on college at checkout limited time a uh, little t- limited time offer and terms apply here but but that's 50 percent off up to twenty dollars no minimum subtotal and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the doordash app in the app store and again enter the code locked on college don't forget that's the code locked on college for 50 percent off your first order with doordash Okay, as many of you know, Michigan State followed up its suspension of football coach Mel Tucker for alleged inappropriate behavior with female rape victims advocate. Um, uh, uh, Her name was uh, uh, Tracy, Brenda Tracy. Brenda Tracy, I just kind of escaped my mind there for a moment. And all that was going on, they gave him notice to terminate and saying that it intended to fire him for cause. Part of Tucker's 10-year, $95 million contract allowed him seven days to formally respond to such action. Well, he and his attorneys have responded. In fact, on Monday, they said that the university agreed to all of the allegations against Coach Tucker without any meaningful review of the facts. They just accepted them as facts, and now they want to fire him. In all, Tucker's response was a 25-page document that refuted point by point every reason the school gave for firing for cause. Tucker has uh, maintained his relationship with Brenda Tracy, that it was completely consensual, private, and a relationship that involved mutual flirting and included phone sex. Tucker's attorneys state that in no way was the moral turpitude clause in his contract violated, Tracy uh, denies that the phone sex was consensual, and that's how this whole thing started. So at stake here, we all know what it's all about. There's about $79 million that are remaining on his contract. He wants Michigan State to pay him. They don't want to pay him. That's what it all comes to. So everybody's dotting their I's and crossing their T's on this deal. By the way, the Spartans were off to a 2-0 start when the school suspended Tucker after the USA Today story leaked. And uh, Tucker was under a, the story was about how Tucker was under a Title IX investigation for this alleged misbehavior. And the investigation closed this summer. And, of course, the hearing for that investigation is coming up uh, in early October. It is right around the corner. It's in a couple of weeks. The timing is kind of odd, so don't confuse it. That that hearing, that's still going to take place, even though the last seven days, the school and Tucker and their attorneys have been going back and forth with fine print on getting out of this contract. Since since his suspension, the Spartans have been beaten by a combined score of 72 to 16. They were 2-0. Now they've been pummeled in the next two games, 72 to 16, under interim head coach Harlan Barnett. With an assist, of course, from former head coach Mark D'Antonio. So it really hasn't been going well. They have not been playing well. Problems at quarterback now with Noah Kim, who got banged up a little bit last week. Too many turnovers. Points left on the field. Receivers dropping balls. It just hasn't been good. It has not been fine-tuned by any stretch of the imagination. I think they were hoping for a little bit better this year at Michigan State. But that's where we stand right now. So both sides have legally, formally state of their case contractually. So we'll see what happens moving forward. All right, on to some brighter news, if you will. Let's get into uh, the Big Ten Players of the Week and all the awards that we want to get to here. Offensive Player of the Week, Northwestern wide receiver Bryce Kurtz. You know, whether you're a Northwestern fan or not, you got to feel good unless you're a Minnesota fan. You got to feel good about these guys. They've gone through a lot with the hazing and you know, not a lot was expected of them to begin with. And they got a couple wins already. They've already doubled last year's win total. It's pretty good. And they got that. They were down 21 points to Minnesota and came back and then won in overtime last week. Northwestern wide receiver Bryce Kurtz was part of that 10 catches, 215 yards receiving and two touchdowns in that game, which they ultimately won 37, 34 in overtime. Fantastic job. Fantastic. Got to applaud that. Defensive player of the week, Ohio State safety, Lathan Ransom. They had career highs in total tackles with 13 and solo with seven. And he led the Buckeyes to a 17-14 road win against Notre Dame on the uh, nationally televised game. Number nine, Notre Dame beat them 17-14. That was a great game, great atmosphere. 
win or lose, that was a great atmosphere and a fun game to watch. And he even uh, included among his tackles the fourth and one stop in the in the third quarter. So good job there by Lathan Ransom. Nice job. Special teams player of the week goes to Wisconsin kicker Nathaniel Bacos. Three for three on extra points. Three for three on field goals. Field goals were of 38, 22, and 48 yards. So a very good job by him on that. And he, um, he's been very good all season long, as a matter of fact. Because the uh, the Badgers, uh, have been, they got that win against Purdue this past weekend. But he's the only uh, Big Ten kicker to remain perfect with five or more attempts this year. And he made uh, five field goals of 30 or more yards so far. So good job there as um, he has continued to work well on special teams for Wisconsin. And they've needed that. Freshman of the week. Stop me if you've heard this before. Minnesota running back Darius Taylor even in a losing cause every week. It's him. It's unbelievable. He had 216 all purpose yards versus Northwestern rushed 31 times for 198 yards, had two touchdowns and 18 receiving yards in that game. Now he's rushed for over 135 yards, three straight games. And he leads the big 10 in rushing yards. He's got 532 and carries with 87 carries. And like I said, stop me. If you heard this before, he's uh, this is his third straight freshman of the week award in the big 10 fantastic fantastic effort by him so uh applaud kids from detroit and playing very well he's just going to run the table on this he's just going to win it every week <laughs> i guess he'll be freshman of the year if he gets it there yeah he probably already has that locked up right now if you get three freshman of the week awards you might be freshman of the year in the big 10 already and we're not even to the halfway point of the season. I want to thank you guys for making Lockdown Big Ten your first listen every day. You every day is out there. I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate you. And I also want to take this moment to remind you that on Fridays on this channel, we got the Lockdown College Football Kickoff Live Show from 11 a.m. Eastern to 1 p.m. Eastern. If you don't catch it live, you can catch it later. Uh, it's taped. It's there. It's on this channel. But uh, catch it live is pretty cool. I'm on it for a couple of minutes every day, previewing all the Big Ten. So always invite you to check that out. In the meantime, I'm going to invite you to uh, subscribe. You know, we got over 3,500 subscribers this week. Thanks to you guys. Let's get some more. Let's keep it going. Uh, share, follow, and like Lockdown Big Ten uh, from wherever you consume this podcast. And coming up, middle of the week, time to take a look at my I'll share with you our Big Ten power rankings, which you can agree or disagree with. Always love that. That's all coming up next here on Lockdown Big Ten. I want to tell you about Jace Medical. Jace Medical provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. And all it takes to get a Jace case is you fill out a simple online form. Maybe in some cases you jump on a phone call with a, with a doctor, one of the board-certified physicians, and you get ongoing care from their physicians on any treatment-related questions. They're there for you. This is doctor created, doctor recommended. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, we are now at the one year anniversary of a time when the area I live just suffered a Cat 5 hurricane. I know what it's like to have emergencies, supply chains cut off, chaos. You don't want medicines to be part of that uh, rotation, but sometimes it is. So don't be caught unprepared. In fact, here's what a Jace case looks like right here. Get to mail this to you. And uh, it's got the antibiotics inside of it. Nice little package there. So you're all good to go. Easy to find. So whether it's a disaster, emergency planning, hurricane prep, pandemics, you know what happens when that, uh, we have to go through that together. Sometimes you can't get what you always take for granted. That's always available. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones uh, during the unexpected because the unexpected does happen. Jace Medical is simple. You go online, you fill out a form, and then you get prescription life-saving medications right at your door. The Jace case gives you peace of mind so that you're not just hoping you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure you have the medication in hand. You can save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using my code Locked On. All right, locked on is the code. Use it at checkout uh, at jacemedical.com. That's jacemedical.com. You spell Jace, J A S E, medical.com. So check it out. You'll be glad you did. 
All right, so it is time for our weekly visit with our Big Ten Power Rankings that I put together as put together by me. These are mine. You want to criticize them? You want to say, hey, yeah, I think you got that right? Feel free. So let's put them on screen, and let's see where we are at with this, okay? There they are. I have moved Ohio State up to number one. They have uh, largely been number two throughout the season, but let's face it. You beat a uh, number nine ranked Notre Dame team on the road. I got to give you some credit for that. Buckeyes are moving up to number one. Sure, Michigan, you're undefeated. Haven't beat anybody ranked yet, so I flipped them. Ohio State one, Michigan number two. And right there, tucked in right behind them, was, uh, is, is uh, Penn State, the Penn State Nathan Lions at number three. They're steady number three. I know I have a lot of Nittany Lion fans that check out this podcast regularly, and you're going to get your chance. You're going to get your chance to play these guys and see what you can do. Uh, I've got Maryland at number four. I just made a pretty big case for how well they're doing. i got to have them at number four, the fourth best team in the Big Ten right now. And uh, they're going to look to try and go to 5-0 and this weekend against Indiana before they have Ohio State coming up on their schedule. Wisconsin at number five. I, I think, I think, this is tough. I think Wisconsin is the best team in the West. Um, I got Rutgers here at number six, very scrappy. You know, I know they lost to Michigan 31 to seven. That game was a lot close. It was 14, seven at the half. And I thought Rutgers played them pretty tough. And then, and then it just slipped away from them later on because Michigan's bigger, faster, stronger. Um, I expect another tough battle like that for Michigan against Nebraska, to be honest with you. There's Nebraska next at, Oh, I'm sorry. Iowa at number seven. Ah, uh, Maybe after what we saw against uh, Penn State this past weekend, maybe we should drop them a little further. They, they have a bit of a mess. I have a feeling they're going to go home this weekend, Kinnick Stadium, and get better. I don't know if it's going to help the offensive woes. Maybe maybe Iowa sinks in the upcoming polls. I still think they're the second best in the West right now. Um, I got Nebraska at eight, at two and two. They're starting to put it together. Still pretty good defense as well. Northwestern, we got to throw Northwestern a bone. They're usually at the bottom. You know, you get a conference win, come from behind, 21-point deficit. Uh, move no Northwestern up to number nine in the poll. And, of course, the Minnesota Golden Gophers, who just lost to Minnesota, so I can't have Minnesota ranked higher than Northwestern this week anyway. So Minnesota rounds out the top ten. Let's see who we have the best of the rest. Finding Illini at number 11. I don't know what to do with you guys. It feels like uh, Illinois is really struggling. But they're racking up a few wins here and there. So I, you know, I don't know that they know where they're at right now. And so here on our power rankings, you got number 11. Michigan State at number 12. Lots of problems, turnovers, drops, coaching problems. We got Purdue at 13. I think Purdue could be higher than this. I think they can move up if they could if Ryan Walters can just get his defense to not, you know, give up like 30 points. I think they could be a much better football team. And then uh the Indiana Hoosiers, my beloved, beloved Indiana Hoosiers. In case you don't know, I'm an Indiana grad. So four overtimes to beat Akron over the weekend. That was tough. That was tough. But uh, that's uh, that's a look at all 14, our Big Ten power rankings here on Lockdown Big Ten. So there we have it. If you want to agree, or disagree, pick some of them apart, move it apart, hit me up at Talk Big Ten with the number 10 on Twitter. And also here on YouTube as well. Always enjoy your comments. Don't forget our website. You see the crawl here on the bottom. If you're watching on video, talkbig10.com. That's with the number 10, talkbig10.com. I'm going to ask all you guys, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Really would appreciate it. And follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app. That way you'll get the latest episode of Lockdown Big Ten as soon as it becomes available each and every day. And now I'm inviting you to check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast for the latest on everything else going on in sports in the meantime i hope you all have a, a great day i appreciate you coming uh, by and stopping spending some time with us and i can't wait till we meet again tomorrow i'm craig Sheeman for locked on big 10